Welcome to the news, everyone. I'm Jameson Shook, and we're going to get it started with What's Up Heritage, here with Lindsey Rogers and Cannon Stafford. Take it away, you two. Thanks a lot, Jameson. Let me fill you in on What's Up Heritage. If you haven't already signed up for your next school year's classes, you can do that using Student Portal. Hurry up and register, because the deadline is February 14th. If you're confused on how to sign up, see your counselor for assistance at lunch from the 8th to the 12th. You don't want to be stuck in an unenjoyable class. Moving on from registration, cookies are returning back to Heritage High School. Can you believe that? You can buy them in the atrium. Cookies go for a dollar for two and 50 cents for one. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. If you're looking for something to get your significant other, the FFA team is selling roses on February 9th and, the, and February 11th. You can buy single carnations for $2 and single roses for $3. Now let me pass you on to Lindsey Rogers with our weather this week. Thanks, Cannon. Now let me get you right into the weather segment. On Friday, we will have a high of 49, a low of 29 with a 2% chance of rain. On Saturday, we will have a high of 52, a low of 30 with a 10% chance of rain. On Sunday, we will have a high of 57, a low of 34 with a 10% chance of rain. And on Monday, we will have a high of 59, a low of 45, and a 10% chance of rain. That's it for our weather. Let's get you right back to Jameson. And as well you know, February is Black History Month. And of course, we're going to celebrate it too. But how are we celebrating it? Here's Liam Smart with how we're going to celebrate. Well, February is Black History Month uh, in the United States. I believe it started around 1978. Um, and it was uh, recognized by the President of the United States uh, each year. I think that it is important that we do educate all students, not just blacks, not whites, not just any race, about black history in particular and other types of history. It's a time really to uh, tell stories about African Americans uh, and their con contributions uh, in the United States. It's a history that hasn't always been told. Um, so we make, a, we make an effort during the month of February to highlight um, stories of Americans uh, who are African Americans and, and their contribution to uh, the United States. Um, so each day during the month we'll have uh, a different fact that we'll um, announce. We will be playing some music um, just to kind of show what our culture is all about. Unfortunately, we will not have rapper hip hop, but we will definitely have some old school and new school hip hop and R&B. There will be some other activities uh, planned by the Culture Club here at Heritage High School. Oh, Culture, um, Culture Club is going to be doing lots of representation for Black History Month, as well as also being able to put it on the announcements. I believe that all cultures should be represented equally and should have their time, but Black History Month is a really crucial time for all African Americans or um, Americans of descent who are black to really get that moment to hone in on these things. Uh, oftentimes black people are underrepresented and they are unappreciated in a mass wave and I think that it is a really nice way to just kind of show our appreciation and just to be able to enrich in our history. Moving on now, later this month we have something called Unfinished Week and Ashton McKeon, Hunter Livingston and Ethan Kingsley are here to bring you more on that right here. Unfinished Week is a week that um, some of our students came up with it back in 2016. It's basically a suicide prevention program. It is a time that we want students to think about what they have in their life unfinished. Well, I was put on this committee by uh, a coach of mine because he believed that I had some, I, I would really understand being able to do something like this and that I'd had experiences in the past um, that are similar to students and what a lot of kids go through. I think it's a really great thing and it's really important because, um, you know, everyone, not everyone's always the best, doing the best. We're, we're all going through something and it helps to be there for each other. Unfinished Week um, is basically a time where we just want everybody to kind of just really think and focus in on goals, the future, what you have in your life that you want to accomplish, and also encourage you to talk to people and be in a listening ear to other people. Unfinished Week is for suicide awareness, and we are trying to incorporate more knowledge about suicide awareness and more information about it 
to students so that way they can have resources if they suspect that anyone they know is um, feeling that way, if they themselves are feeling that way, because it's a very important thing and it's a very real thing. So this week we are giving out uh, bracelets, the unfinished bracelets, with um, the number for the suicide prevention hotline. And then we are handing out cards that says we are unfinished with uh, suicide warning signs. So we're just letting students know about that. Well, Unfinished Week is going to be a little bit different this year. Um, since the program started in 2016, the county has now um, adopted, I guess, the Unfinished Idea, and we will be partnering with LFO and Ringgold next year for some more activities, but what our goal is is to have an activity every single month for Unfinished, so you will be seeing Unfinished in different places throughout the school year um, and in the years to come. Mm -hmm. That'll do it for the news portion of the show. And let me tell you something, this place was rocking on Tuesday. In fact, me and Taylor are going to be telling you about it here in a second. Stay tuned. Sports is next. So hungry. Attention all students. They're now selling cookies in the front lobby. Yes! Let's go. Back everybody and my lord those cookies look amazing you ready to do some sports tate sounds like a plan thanks jameson and today let's get started with some basketball yes yeah, so our boys unfortunately lost last friday but they had a chance to redeem themselves this past tuesday against ringgold okay they pull it off here's cole price and kate Kennard with a game preview for senior town so tuesday we had senior night here had ringgold come in uh did our senior recognition we got a good group of seniors a huge group of seniors we're gonna have a a lot of shoes to fill. Those guys have been uh, awesome for us for a, for a long time. I love those guys, and we're going to miss them big time. Um, we're able to get a win against Ringgold, which is always fun. Was sweeping for the year. Uh, senior and I felt pretty good. You know, felt good to be appreciated, or at least feel appreciated. Uh, and then we got a big win over Ringgold, and that's always good. I absolutely hate Ringgold, so I love beating them. Played Ringgold Tuesday night, senior night. It was fun. Uh, we had a good crowd. We had a good win. I mean, we played decent. There were some times we played good, but other times we played really bad. But we got the dub, so that's good. And then tonight, now we go down to, to Cedartown for a region matchup. It's basically the, the regular season championship game. So if we beat them, we'll be the one seed going in the tournament. And if, uh, if they beat us, they'll be the one seed. So it's a big matchup. A uh, bunch of big, muscled up guys down there, and they've been playing really well lately. So we've got a big task ahead of us, but hopefully we'll get the win and, and kind of win the regular season championship. Now, when we go to Cedartown Friday, uh, if we win that game, then we're first in the region. If we lose, then we're second. But we're not going to have to worry about that. we got to go down there and get a dub, first in the region, get a bye, then win the region championship. Hopefully we can make the long drive down there and uh, get a win so we can uh, be first place for the region tournament. And uh, if we do that, we'll be having the first round bye and uh, hopefully have a better seating to uh, be in the region championship and win a region championship. Our boys would make great janitors after the sweep of Ringgold. The girls now coach up and squall is looking to avoid being swept by the Lady Tigers. That would be a huge monumental task for our girls team. But last Tuesday was different, way different. Here's Jameson with a recap. Uh, so we had a pretty big week this week, you know, um, hosting Ringgold on Tuesday night. Um, 
big win for us, of, of course, after going over there a week and a half ago and playing so poorly and, and uh, not being ourselves and, and kind of getting run out of the gym in the second half. Um, you know, I, th I think the girls really responded uh, really well, really showed a lot of maturity, a lot of mental toughness. Uh, to have a good week of practice last week and then um, a great day on Monday leading into the game on Tuesday. So a great game plan. I thought our girls talked, uh, communicated flawlessly on the defensive end um, and beat a really good ring goal team. We have a great deal of respect for, for that program over there. And of course, I worked with Coach Stockberger for seven years prior to coming over here and have a great deal of respect for her. So, uh, But because it's a rival and because it, it does hold a special meaning to me, it was a big win for the team and a big win for me personally. We came out with the win. Uh, we played them the first time and we didn't do as well, but we got them this time. Um, we play Cedartown tonight. We only won by one at home, and it's going to be a rough game. We have to win this one. We have three more region games left. Well, beating Ringgold is great, but our goal is to obviously move forward and and to uh, win a region title, and we're, it's, you know, it's, it's achievable. We have a, a, another big game tonight against Cedartown, and uh, we've had a good couple of days of practice preparing for them. The last time they came here, it was a one-point game, so we know it's going to be a tough, uh, tough game, especially on the road down there, and a pretty tough gym to play in. So, yeah, every game from here on out is huge. Uh, if we want to obtain that, that one or two seed in the region tournament and, and try to play for a region title, I think it's big to get a um, – the, the best seed you can, obviously, moving forward. So, Congrats on a big win, ladies, against Ringgold. That one's huge. On football now, and our guys had a big day as Zach Brown and Jonathan Washburn signed. That's right. Jonathan Washburn to the University of Georgia and Zach Brown to the University of Shorter. Our very own Coach Green was on site. Take it away, Coach. I know that you guys are really great. Um, that's who you are, and I'm excited to watch you. Okay? So at this time, if you guys would like to, uh, to sign your papers, and we'll get some photographs going. Congratulations. Some people are gifted and some people work for it, and these guys are both. I mean, they've got some God-given ability, but they've really worked hard to get the most out of that. So I'm just happy for them. They're good, they're good people. Um, they're going to do great things um, in their life and for their community. So I'm just happy that they get this opportunity. It's a big weight off my chest. It's, been, it's uh, something I've been working hard for for the past uh, four or five years of my life, and it feels good to finally uh, complete it and move on to the next chapter. He's got, he's got the opportunity to go as you know, all the way to the, to the next level after that is as, as gifted as he is in that area, and you know, I'm sure he'll sure he'll work hard for that. Well, I mean, it's been a long road. It's really crazy because this year, I mean, you didn't know what's going to happen because Corona, camps canceled, kind of changed up a lot of colleges and what could happen and limited scholarship spots. So it was finally great to find somewhere I felt at home, and it's especially so close to home, I can always come home if I need to. So it's just great to be able to go down there. I mean, they both uh, they both embrace the grind for sure. I mean. Um, Lalas, who was uh, both of their position coaches at one time, was just talking about how how, um, how Zach really embraces the grind. You have to be. I mean, it's a football's a tough sport, and uh, if you're not willing to grind, you're not going to last very long. And both those guys will do it, man. They love the weight room. They love to work. They handle their academics. Uh, they, they're just kind of the total package when it comes to uh, taking care of business. They recruited me as a defensive, defensive end, so hopefully I'll be playing D-line. Um, i got to gain a few pounds. i got to gain about 20 to 30, but uh, hopefully I'll be good and just – Fight all I can. Uh, being able to make it to Georgia is a pretty uh, good accomplishment for me, and uh, I can't really say anything about trying to make it to the next level yet. But that would be amazing. So I just gotta, I gotta see how well I perform at Georgia before I think about that. Back to the news now, and well, y'all know what time it is. John Courtney, Gunnar Mathis, it's time for a Tech Talk. And this week's topic: driverless cars. Take it away, you two. This is John Courtney and welcome back to Tech Talk. On this week's Tech Talk, we're gonna be discussing self-driving cars. Self-driving cars are on the rise as many companies have begun to produce them, such as Tesla. Today, we're gonna to be interviewing students from Heritage to see what they think about self-driving cars. Hey. Come here, come here. Yes. So what do you think about self-driving cars? Uh, gotta be honest, self-driving cars kind of freak me out because, um, uh, they may be smart, but they're not as smart as humans. I mean, you could be like, uh, let's say, driving across like uh, like a curve, and uh, there could be like ice there, 
but the ice is invisible because the ice is like clear. So the car doesn't see the ice and it, it keeps going at its normal speed. And then you can like slip on the ice and fall off the mountain and the car just goes tumbling, tumbling, tumbling down and then you're dead. And that's why I don't like self-driving cars. So what do you think about self-driving cars? Um, I think they're pretty cool. You know, you can watch a movie or read a book while you ride around. Um, it could be dangerous though, you know could be messing up real easily, a sensor could get blocked, you know, and have a wreck. So what is your opinion on self-driving cars? Um, I don't really think self-driving cars is a good idea, because, like, you need to be focused on where you're driving and continue on your focus, because if you don't, then something might happen at night, and you might crash into someone else, and that's just not a good thing. All in all, Heritage students tend to really like self-driving cars. Personally, I really like self-driving cars as well. This has been Tech Talk, and we'll see you next week. Great job, you two, on Tech Talk. Well, that'll do it all for this Friday edition of the Five Star News. Thank you all for tuning in. Kayla Cumbie will have her band back on Tuesday. Stay classy, generals.